Welcome to the Things Conference 2021. We have a massive lineup of speakers. We have workshops, many, many companies in the ecosystem join us. The Things Network and the Things Industries can't stop, won't stop. 2020 has been a crazy year, but also it's been a crazy year for IoT. Um, yeah, we've seen massive growth. Crazy to think that uh, one year ago, we were actually with 1,500 people in Amsterdam from 61 countries. We uh, celebrated our fifth anniversary. And again, we beat in a, another world record. 832 kilometers, which is actually almost the physical limit of uh, LoRa. And we're nearing already 800,000 uh, devices that, uh, that we have on the network. You can literally say uh, LoRa is everywhere. Uh, if you look at the diversity of our ecosystem, everywhere around the world, in any industry. Let me quickly go through a few of them. So for instance, uh, we see Loran ships for condition monitoring by a large supermarket chains for asset tracking by railway organization, in this case, to synchronize the clock. These are partners that do predictive maintenance, tracking uh, workers across industrial sites to make sure that uh, art is preserved, uh, retail security systems, elderly care, CO2 sensors to measure if the ventilation is properly done in the light of, of course, uh, the, the COVID crisis. Uh, our partner Spacewell, they are automating entire buildings, creating a digital twin of the building. This is a customer that tracks uh, a cow through colors, agricultural use cases like moisture, like irrigation, CO2 in schools, cold chain, and of course, the mouse trap. The mouse trap. And this is not going to go away. Right? So, what drives all these different use cases? Well, that's the thing stack. So, the architecture of the main components uh, is what you see here. So, you see gateways on the left, they are connected to a gateway server. We have a LoRaWAN network server, an application server, all kinds of integrations. Uh, we also have the join server, an identity server with a registry of um, users and applications and everything. So this is a complete stack. It's feature complete. You can uh, connect any LoRaWAN device, any um, device class in any region. We have APIs. So as a developer, as a systems integrator, uh, you can integrate the thing stack in your solution or you can uh, connect it directly in an, in an IoT platform, so, such as AWS IoT uh, or Azure IoT. It's really a new generation, uh, really built from scratch. What's also new and what is an inherent component of the thing stack is our device repository, because we figured that it's always quite challenging to onboard new LoRaWAN devices, because there are so many settings, so many LoRaWAN versions out there, uh, so many things you need to, uh, need to know about. So what we came up with is to fill this gap and to um, make it really easy for device makers to submit the information about their end devices in a open source repository. Our The Thing Stack product can load all this information. This makes it really easy to onboard new devices. The device repository also plays a central role, uh, not only in onboarding the device, but also as a catalog. Um, and we will also connect our marketplace uh, on our websites to the device repository. So it's a central place uh, where uh, device makers can submit information, where you can buy them, what the operating conditions are, the compliancy, and things like that. Just one step back and, and just revisit, like, what's the power of LoRaWAN again? First of all, it's ultra low power, long range, uh, deep indoor penetration, it is in the free spectrum. Uh, geolocation, the end-to-end -end security is embedded in the protocols. Uh, you're actually the inventor of the, the first firmware over the air update. What we're also excited about is the certification program in the big ecosystem that it has. Uh, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of devices available for any use case. So what happened in, in LoRaWAN, uh, in the LoRaWAN technical, on the technical side last year? So there is a new LoRaWAN version, uh, 1.0.4. Uh, it contains a lot of improvements related to Class B, for example, and many other things, uh, security improvements, and a lot of clarifications. Next to that, there is the LoRaWAN certification test tool, and that allows you as a device maker to uh, run all sorts of tests with your end devices before you submit it to a test house. The QR code specification, finally, there is a new regional parameter specification that also adds a lot of regions. So we already mentioned the growth of the LoRaWAN uh, volume. Uh, number of messages. So we took a sample uh, because it's a lot of data and uh, traffic for the Things Network is roughly 64%. So that's for the community network. Uh, we saw um, an increase in volume of 100% in the last six months. Uh, so it's growing really fast now. 
And these devices are actually designed, manufactured, distributed, installed somewhere. They, are, they have been tested, they are, they are out there, and they are sending this traffic. And when the owners of these devices, when they started thinking about their use cases, maybe that's already two years ago. So imagine what is in the pipeline. It seems that we're at this point that, that, that we're reaching these maturity levels in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. It's also the right time to start. So we've talked about messages, we talked about technology, developers, many use cases. If you look at uh, 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 the developers in the world, of uh, roughly 7.7 .7 billion people, there's only 25 million people that can deliver production level code. After the, uh, the last five years, we've been able to educate a lot of them. Uh, but we want to take that one step further uh, by introducing uh, the thing certification. So these are fundamentals, advanced security and, and network management. You can get them at this, uh, this conference. Um, we have all the content to get you prepared. Costs are 99 euros per certification. They're free for everybody at the conference uh, and they're uh, free until the uh, 1st of, uh, of March. We've seen so much demand for education. We've decided to launch something new and that's the Things Industries Developer success program. This is a complete package, a subscription with a yearly fee that makes sure that um, you do not make the beginner's mistakes. It will cost 199 euros per year. You will get a development enterprise network server. You can get unlimited certifications. You have access to all online conferences. You will get discounts for physical conferences. Four times a year we have update sessions where we have all our experts from our teams, from our partners, gathered on four days a year where we'll update you. One enterprise support ticket, uh, you'll, create, uh, you'll use a system which will allow you to prototype, but also it's easy to migrate to uh, an enterprise production system from there. We have uh, uh, Alistair Fulton, he's uh, General Manager Wireless IoT and LoRa at Semtec. And now, more than ever before, with 150 public network operators across 100 countries, with more than 1.2 million deployed gateways, tens of thousands of private networks out there, spanning land, sea, and now even space. Now more than ever before, the choice is yours. We're very honored to have Donna Moore here. You know, 2021 is all about scale. Next up is LoRaWAN device management. Uh, we're gonna launch something very cool and we made a, a video for that. We present the Generic Node Sensor Edition a LoRaWAN device packed with sensors and loads of features, capable of supporting several use cases with a single device and just one single supply chain. So here it is, temperature, humidity uh, sensors, accelerometer, which uh, can detect rotation, fall, uh, impact, a buzzer, a quick connector, so you can use this for prototyping. There is the flash memory, and that allows you to store your firmware versions. So you can ship the generic node with all sorts of firmwares, and you can activate the firmware to use when the device is deployed in the field. This now allows us to build very good end-to-end -end industrial IoT solutions. Let that be from the electrical grid to detect problems in various industrial settings from power plants uh, to production processes. You've been talking a lot about uh, the Things stack. You've shown us fancy consoles. But the last time I looked, the thingsnetwork.org still has the old version. We are now finally upgrading the Things Network to V3. So I showed this slide before, uh, the overview with the different uh, instances of the Things stack. And we are now upgrading uh, the Things Network to the Things stack. And then with Packet Broker, you can exchange traffic with other network instances. And we have a new way to log in uh, for, uh, for your uh, user account, and that's called the Things ID. And the Things ID is our single sign-on system for all the things. So you're going to use that for logging into our website, community pages, the forum, certification, but also the new uh, console, the Things Network, uh, for apps and third-party websites. Uh, and so if you in the community want to build a login system, you can do that. And we're going to uh, shut down uh, V2, um, and we have a bunch of migration tools available. And then we have the Things Network V3, and uh, we, the Things Industries, uh, are going to operate all the public clusters. We want to harmonize that, we want to use a single DNS, a single configuration, and a single version. But with Packet Broker, it's going to be easier than ever to uh, set up your own cluster. And we start with uh, uh, deployments in Europe, the Americas, and Australia. And we're going to put a poll online on the uh, Things Network forums uh, to ask uh, what your opinion is where we should deploy the other public clusters globally. 
we saw a huge opportunity for IoT on the seas. And we're working with companies like Norsea on asset tracking, condition monitoring, through our partnership with uh, Williamson Shipping. Together, uh, we built many use cases and provided Williamson Shipping with a platform to, to, to run their IoT applications. Until now, wireless data collection in maritime supply chains has been a challenge as these harsh environments are not friendly to many radio frequency technologies. We solve this by using the latest radio frequency technologies. Next up, uh, announcement where we are super excited about. It brings together the power of LoRaWAN and the power of cellular LTEM. LoRaWAN gateway with an LTEM backhaul together with the global LTEM SIM of Deutsche Telekom. The, the deep indoor penetration of LTM makes sure that you can put this uh, gateway anywhere in, for instance, a building. It's a completely secured connection. Today, the Things Industries and DTIT are kicking off a collaboration to solve some challenges in the IoT industry. Every conference, what we try to do is what is the biggest problem that the IoT industry is facing to scale and how we're going to solve this. There's one final uh, uh, hurdle, there's one final challenge. Um, we've to put it all together. To put it all together. We're going to come with a disruptively new service where we will uh, have a wholesale global installation service, a global workforce of gateway and sensor installation uh, engineers and field services. It, the network covers more than 25 countries. It includes maintenance and swaps, uh, and they start for 2,500 euros, and it comes with one gateway and six devices to start with. But we believe that this part of the puzzle will solve a massive scalability issue in the market. So we have the generic node, we have the stack, we have our partners, integrators, and this is getting it installed at yeah. scale. That's it, still different than yeah. last year. We hope to see you at the booth, yeah. uh, connect with each other, stay safe, hang tight, enjoy the conference, and hope to see you next year.